Hey guys, it's Frosty. Uh, we're gonna do some experiment with some paint today. You'll have to excuse the unsteady camera. My legs are being really, really rotten today. Uh, so, what we're starting with, I just sanded down and repainted a uh, West Coast Choppers bicycle tank using base coat black. That's gonna be our foundation for that one. You'll see what I'm going to be doing with that. And we may you know, go a little further than just the, the secondary and clear on that. We'll see. Also got the fender covered with me silver metal flake. I don't know how well you can see the metal flake, but we'll see what happens. But again that's also a base coat so time to get started all right so um on that silver metallic fender you can see where i laid a line of tape got just some general rough in shapes we're gonna go back over that but i put a light coat of root beer pearl over that now once that's once that's good and hard, I'm going to go back over and lay some more lines. Then we're going to add a couple more coats, thicken up the color a little bit, then lay some more lines, thicken it up some more. So we'll see what happens. Um, I got a little bit of spattering down here. At first, I thought maybe it was something bad with the tip, but then I realized with the fan spray on that tip, that it, my finger was just in the way, so I got a little touch of spatter. I mean, it'd be different with an airbrush, wouldn't have that problem, but this is experimental, and I can buy this same brand of paints for my airbrush, as well as in aerosol cans. And I was curious about the aerosol cans, so, you know, once we finish, then I'll kind of reveal what exactly I've got going on here for, for the candy colors. But, I said I wanted to experiment with them, see if it was a cheaper or, or even quicker and easier alternative, you know, to try to find something where I don't have to clear out my airbrush every damn time, try to cure that cleanup problem. Really kind of see the sun hitting her there. That, that is awful pretty. We'll see what she does once she darkens up. But next we're going to move over to the, uh, to the West Coast tank while this is tacking up. Okay, so what we got going on here is first coat. See that kind of shimmer to the colors? Hope that's showing up on camera. I'll try turning on my light here in a minute. Let's see if we can get the sunlight on her. Sunlight works better. This is a gold, orange, purple, red color change pearl so well not so much pearl but more of a candy this is first coat i laid it real thin it's already got some reactivity to it matter of fact let's see if i can hmm okay give me one second here i gotta figure out my damn my light here okay now let's see if we can Hit it with the light. When I say this is only one coat, we'll let that stand, see what it happens. While she dries, hopefully we don't have any kind of problems with hazing due to the humidity or temperature or whatever, because that will greatly affect your paint. But boy, just walking around it, you know, visually, there's a hell of a color flash there. Alright, back to it. We're going to switch back over to the fender, lay some more stripes. Okay, um, we are on the third coat on the color change. And so far, that's really, I mean, it, the spray is silky smooth. It really does. I don't know how deep of a color change you guys can see on camera. You know, earlier when I walked over here, it really kind of bronze and golded out. 
I think you can see that. But, I mean, yet that thing, that color change is really, really pretty. Well, I say it, it goes on smooth as silk. The one thing I'm, I'm noticing, the rattle cans that it comes in, they don't go very far. I mean, like right there, you can really see a good amount of color change just holding that position. That's really, really pretty. That hasn't even had a fourth. I might be able to get a fifth coat out of it. Hi, baby doggy. But once that's done, once that's good and cured, I'm going to go back over it, hit it with some clear coat, wet sand it, buff it down, and we'll, we'll really get to see what it does. Now over here, let me stumble my way over here. Oh. All right. Yeah, see, that's it's got really good color to it. Let me see if I can get my shadow out of the sunlight. No, of course not. There. That's turning out really, really pretty. I'm liking that. I'll lay one, maybe two more coats of that. Just to darken it up. Then we're going to start pulling the masking and revealing all those stripes. Some of them will be pure silver. Others will have a light root beer candy to them. That's going to be really, really nice when it's done. This one, as far as the coverage on the paint, little heavier than I, than I expected. But, yeah, this isn't really the intended application of bike parts. A lot of guys seem to use these for uh, for like RC cars doing their Lexan bodies, but I wanted to like I say I just I wanted to experiment with them, see what they're gonna do, see if they hold up. But uh, we'll we'll see. Uh, again, like I say, this one's gonna get clear coated and wet sanded, then hit with the buffer. You know, we'll go through the full process just to make sure that it's right. See what this stuff does, and we'll, then we'll see if I can really endorse this stuff. So, uh, on to the next step. Uh, can we say, holy crap. Oh, that is pretty. Uh, let's see if we can see the flake in there. Yeah, I think you can. Oh, that is sweet. Yeah, that turned out really good. Yeah, it is definitely time to break out the clear coat for this one. Wow. Man, once that's clear coated and cut and buffed, Man, that's going to be sweet. Yeah, I'm definitely digging this so far. I love it. I mean, root beer really ain't my color, but that is sweet. First coat of clear is on. Have to let her rest for a bit. Shoot it with another layer here real shortly.
Yeah, that stuff looks good. Okay, so, uh, I think I gotta scoop my chair back. Alright, now, I have wet sanded and just put a, a light buff on these things. Yeah, and I'll tell you, the fender actually turned out pretty good. There's a few blemishes in it, and I'm going to explain that here in a minute. But overall, I mean, I'm, I'm really pretty pleased with that. You know, so you can get really, really nice results with a spray can, and this is your proof. Because this was all done with rattle cans, believe it or not. down to the tank which I don't know how it's really gonna flash indoors or change colors or whatever you want to call it uh, you can see some of it definitely more reactive in the sunlight than it is indoors but still very pretty I like it BAM Tell you what, that silver flake, that just that, that looks super good under that root. But um, okay, now let's talk about the paints. The uh, the metal, silver metal flake, believe it or not, is Rust Oleum glitter. Simple three and a half dollar a can Rust Oleum glitter. I was gonna show you guys, but I don't see a can handy. I thought I had them in here, but that is what I used as a substrate, the silver right there. My base coat is Rust-Oleum glitter paint, okay? Now, I did go through the trouble of putting just a touch of air. I had, my, had a small air compressor out set for five pounds. That's it, five pounds air, just so I could spray it off, and I sprayed it... Oh, probably a good six to eight inches, you know, distance at five pounds. That's it. Just kind of knock that standing flake down and get it a little smoother. That does seem to help on the finish. Yeah, it's not, there. there's very, very little pocking, if any. I mean, it really did finish up nice. But then, like I showed you, I uh, sprayed the root beer candy over it. Yeah, I, I laid down just some random tape lines. I really didn't plan anything out. Just laid some tape, got some shapes. Nothing, nothing extravagant, but just laid some tape lines. And then, yeah, the, I, I had the tape on before I ever applied the pearl, or the, uh, the candy. Laid my tape lines out, shot down one, yeah, I think uh, one or two coats. And that's when I peeled back all the ones that are kind of a gold color. I peeled these back, left the silver the entire time. But peeled back the ones that you see in gold after the second coat of the root beer pearl, or root beer candy. Why do I keep saying pearl? But, again, like I say, I left those till I got the second coat of root beer candy on there. Peeled those off, and then went third and fourth coat, just real light. Yeah, you know, when you're using candies, believe me, you got to get go light. But that was in a rattle can. Um, you can buy these paints for airbrushes as well. But like I said, I was looking to see if I could find something that would kind of get me, you know, less clean up and still be cost effective. Um, is that it? Nope. There we go. Spaz sticks, root beer, gold, well, let's turn that so you can see it. Candy golden root beer. This stuff works really well. The color is excellent. You know, you, it's not hard to layer and get, get good different tones. It's really easy to work with. Sprays very well. Unless you got a fat finger accidentally hanging over the, the, over the, the cap. 
Cause like I say the spray nozzles on these are kind of kind of odd. See a little yellow tip in there. That thing kind of protrudes. So when you're trying to spray, when you press, sometimes your finger will will kind of clamp down over the spray pattern, and it'll throw you know throw a bunch of wads of goop in the air. So you just got to be conscious of that weird tip. Um, like I say it does spray really well. Good coloration. It's easy to work with. But the problem I would see with doing a bicycle is this size. Okay. That's uh, what three and a half ounces. That was, I think, $11 and change for a three and a half ounce can. It took this entire can to do four layers on one bike vendor. Okay, so when you add it up, I mean, that, that, that's going to add up quick. It really is. This stuff here, same thing. I got four full layers out of one three and a half ounce can. And that was, come on, focus. It's the gold, orange, purple, red color change. This stuff is, like I say, it's really, really pretty. Hey, there it goes. It's focusing. But it's very, very pretty in the sun. Yeah, I mean, even indoors is nice. But you get it out in the sun, and oh, my God, it's gorgeous. You know, it, it, I'm really, really pleased with that one, especially after, you know, after a good wet sand and a, and a, a, a basic cut and buff. It really cleans up well. Got a hell of a good shine to it. I mean, I don't know what the camera's going to show you, but it's got a really nice finish to it. This one, it looks grainy. It's not. Smooth as silk. <laughs> Of course somebody's got a message right in the middle of doing this but again i mean the paints i'm satisfied with this one the uh but this one the spaz sticks gold orange purple red color change that one was i think about 13 dollars again three and a half ounce can took this entire can to get four coats on there which i mean was really plenty enough but i mean you know the results on it i um again i'm thrilled now the only thing i ran into with the uh spaz sticks they're kind of temperamental with clear coat um you'll want to find you a very very neutral clear coat because they did have a few reactions with the clear coat see if I can get in tight enough where yeah you can kind of see it right there okay now look in the silver you see how there's some tinging of the root beer color there that wasn't from a bleed through on the paint and there was one other spot it did it I, I I don't really see it at the moment oh right here get my finger on there we go kind of tinged that paint up and what it was is just a minor reaction with the clear coat it just kind of wanted to pull that color and droop it even though i went super thin on the clear coat layers um i think i put what four layers of clear on that three layers of clear on this and like i say it was just a real light mist coat but it still had that reaction now if i had waited overnight to clear it that may not have happened. I don't know. So just be wary of it. Find a very, very neutral clear. Okay. But, you know, like I said, after a cut and buff, I mean, it's, it's really, really pretty stuff. So is Spaz Sticks worth it? For a small project, sure. But if you're planning on painting an entire bike, no. You're better off to buy, you know, something for an airbrush or an HBLP gun and go that route. Just because what you would spend you know, on, like, a uh, Duplicolor you know, paint shop, if you were to buy a candy coat from from them, you're only going to have, like, Joe, 20 bucks in it, okay? 
if you did your entire bike, I mean, you're going to have 20 just in the fenders, not even including your, your frame, or if you're going to plan on painting the handlebars, you know, or if you're going to be doing multiple colors on it. So just be wary of the cost. You know, like I said, these are three and a half ounce cans for 11 to $13, and they don't go far. Now, what they do, they do well. But do they do they cover a lot of surface area? No. So that's my my paint video. Um, maybe next week or something we'll we'll get this tank back out because you can see the blemishes in the tank. These West Coast uh, choppers tanks really suck. Tons of blemishes, tons of bad spots. And I don't care how hard you sand at it, unless you cover it with bondo completely and then you know skim coat sand it down. You're not getting rid of all that garbage. I just did a quick prep on the tank just so I could paint it. But, um, like I say, maybe next week we'll get this tank back out. Maybe do some airbrushing on it. And we'll show you guys how to do that. So, uh, stay tuned. Subscribe. Come back and check us out sometime. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something from it. Later.